Are you a band in the Baton Rouge or surrounding areas in need of live sound? Look no further than Racket Sound, Lighting, and DJ Services. Racket Sound, Lighting, and DJ Services is big production on a musician's budget. Book Racket Sound, Lighting, and DJ Services today for your next big gig by contacting Louisiana musician Bob Toller at 225-773-4639. That's 225-773-4639. In the market to buy a new home? Or maybe you're wanting to put your home on the market. Contact real estate agent Tanya Halford. Tanya is a KDK Capital Regional Realty Partner and can assist you with all of your real estate needs. Contact Tanya today for your free consultation at 225-202-0657. It's All Hallows' Eve, and you're listening to the Russell and Budtooth Halloween Show on Radio Random Network. Now, here are the hosts... Broadcasting from the sixth stage of hell, <laughs> it's Russell and Mudtooth. Happy Halloween! <laughs> Here we go. It is the Halloween edition of the Mudtooth and Russell Show, right here to uh, for your entertainment. I guess is the best way to put it. That's right. I hope it's. I hope y'all all watching scary movies. And and eating candy and stuff like that. That's what you do on Halloween. And scaring children. There's yes. nothing more fun than scaring children. Nothing. Russell, have you ever? Do you remember? You ever watched like Scooby Doo? Yes. Uh, you know, like when when Scooby or Shaggy would get scared and they would like they they start to running but they wasn't going nowhere. Like the mm-hmm. feet when they, they'd make that sound and be like, and then they take off. Mm-hmm. I've made people do that. I've done that. <laughs> it's like you got wheels connected I've, to your knees. I've made people do that. Yes, indeed. That, that, you know, that brings us back. Before we start, I just want to let everybody know, we supposed to have some, some icons calling in here tonight, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, some things happened, you know. But yeah. They, it, it's okay. For those of you, uh, I'll explain it later. Yeah. Right now, I'm going to tell you a little Halloween story, because... <laughs> I, I found out last week the Halloween story I told about Peter Crunker and the titty eating went over well. <laughs> I bet it did. It, it went did. over good with me. I thought it was great. It was. And it was the thing is, it was the truth. That's why everybody <laughs> liked it. That's right. That's right. But, um, you know, Skeet Hewitt. You remember the Hewitt's family from La Ronja, Louisiana? Mm-mm. Used to do the wrestling and everything. Okay. Every year, bro, that was the house in La Ronja that you were scared of. Oh, yeah? And, you you know, come around. Did set, they try to spook you and stuff? Oh, did they? Yeah. Okay. Oh, the whole house. I mean, they'd have it fixed up. And, mm-hmm. you know, us from La Ronja, we ain't never seen no crap like that. So, right. Um, that's before all these professional spook houses and stuff. That's right. You went to the Hewitts. And I was probably kindergarten. I, I, I was probably uh, Superman or... I don't want to say it was Superman, something like that. I mm-hmm. just remember, well, you know, back in the day, we had a whole lot of money. So you go to the Bill's Dollar Store. Right. And you can either get the mask, mm-hmm. and it was just a, a mask of a white man with a hairdo <laughs> like Superman. It wasn't. And you had to, With the two eyes cut out. And the and rubber band. Yeah, and the, yeah, the little rubber band in the back. Mm-hmm. Or you can get the whole suit. Well, we sprang. You know, we didn't spring for the whole suit. I just got the the mask, and I was supposed to be Superman. So you was just basically you with a mask of a white dude with wavy hair. Exactly. Okay. I got exactly. you. I just want I just want people out there to you know we all be on the same page. Well, I walk up and you know all you know my grandma and I was telling me we're gonna bring you by skeets now. And, you know you are gonna get scared. I ain't scared of shit, mama. Yeah, oh, I'm in yeah. kindergarten. I'm super. Well, I'm. I'm a white dude. <laughs> yeah. I'm the white dude. You know? So we get out of your Ward Cleaver. Oh, <laughs> yes, indeed. All was well until I heard a chainsaw jack. Oh, An old boy yeah. come around there with the ski mask on, and it was over with. I never ran so fast in my life. And I didn't start back trick or treating after that till I was probably about nine years old. <laughs> That's the God's honest truth. One year, we used to, we would do it. We would get all down the street. It was. Uh, it was like five guys on the block. I was the only one that wasn't kin to nobody. I, they was all cousins. Right. 
Well, we all played together, and, and what we'd do is we'd set up all down the street to the end of the block, like somebody be in the ditch and somebody be up in a tree and this kind of stuff. Somebody be around the corner. So, uh, you know, a bunch of folks would come trick-or-treating, and we'd start them going that way, you know, and they were going down the street, and then, of course, whoever jumped out the ditch, ah, and they would come out the tree, ah, and come around the corner, ah. <laughs> so the time they got to the end of the block, they didn't know what to do. Right. And one year, I had uh, one of one of the guys, he was tall. He was he about your height. He was six something. Okay. And uh we found a full gorilla suit. <laughs> so we put that gorilla suit on him and we set him on the front his, his uh, what we do with the the uncle would pass out candy. Mm-hmm. And uh so he was sitting in a chair right next to the uncle. He just sitting there. Wouldn't move like he was stuffed or something. And he'd wait till they got to candy and then he'd whoa, you know come at them like that so uh that went a few times you know that was pretty good well then there was this <laughs> this one bunch come come down the street and there's a little old boy i mean he i he might have been six seven years old mm-hmm. and we heard him before we saw him he was hollering Come on, gorilla! I want you. Uh oh! I want you, gorilla! Now, what it is? They don't got the word right. So he gets up and goes full stride sprint at this <laughs> seven-year-old went, child going ape shit in, in a gorilla suit. Mm-mm. And that kid run out in the middle of a four-lane highway. Now it's a wonder he didn't get killed, but he run out in the middle of a four-lane highway. <laughs> And was standing there in the middle of the road, just screaming like he couldn't move. He was frozen. Yeah. But he just ah ah, and his mama whipped his ass. <laughs> I told you not to be picking on that gorilla. Did y'all have any more fun with the gorilla suit? Uh, that was, you know, it was just one year. I don't know what happened. Evidently, they borrowed it from somebody. I always wanted one of them gorilla suits. Well, I ain't tall enough really to wear one. I look more like a, a chimpanzee. Well, I maybe understand. an orangutan. I just thought it'd be funny. You got long arms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have have somebody walk you around on a chain on a gorilla suit. Yeah, I'd you, be know, all right. be, uh, you know, until, and you couldn't do that today. Somebody be done freaked out and called Peter or oh, whatever. Yeah. You know, but or or the damn zoo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He show up, put a dart in your head. Yeah, just my luck. Put me in there with like the, the alpha male gorilla, you know, <laughs> and I'll have the female gorilla suit on. Have you ever seen the movie Trading Places? Oh and, uh, man, it's been so Eddie long. Eddie Murphy and Dan Aykroyd. Remember the old boy? Yeah, I do remember. Movie he gets put in there with the gorilla. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the old gorilla gives it to him. Too. Yeah, this gorilla is a ruthless. But, so uh, look, it's Halloween, man. It is. So what? Uh, what, what what what's your how do you have any Halloween tradition? Not, now, I'm gonna be honest with you. Halloween's like one of my it's it's one it's on my top two three holidays. Not in particular, you know. You know, when I was a kid, you coming up, that meant that WCW was having Halloween havoc, so we was yeah. getting ready to watch the wrestling pay per view. Mm-hmm. But uh, other than that. No, not really. You know, honestly, when I was coming up, I never was one. I never really did care for the trick or treating. And I'm gonna tell you something now. Dressing the, up. The house where I'm from was the the local doctor. Really? Uh, yeah. He had a he had a little cabin right outside his house, and that's where you would go. And he'd have it. They'd be like they. He had it. You know, lit up. It had an old black light in there. He had that old purple light coming out of him in there, and he'd have that dry ice. And this is back like in the. I don't know, late seventies, early eighties, man. This was like high tech for back then, you know. Mm-hmm. And he'd be all dressed up and would I mean, scare you. I was scared to death. I daddy pull up there. I say, No, he said, Go in there and get that candy. I said, No, Daddy, I don't want to go in there. He said, oh, You better go in there because my daddy wasn't having it now. Right. By God, you was going in there. And I don't care if you are five years old, you going in there. <laughs> Be a man, son. Be a man and get that candy, you know. And that's what I did. But oh, I mean, just scan you. He give you that candy, and you just as soon as that last piece landed in that bucket, you run out of it. <laughs> did you straighten up before you went out to oh, your daddy? No, do? no. I just run. I beeline, to mm-hmm. the corner, you know. Which he didn't care. I got the candy. That was all. But uh, yeah, man, that was. 
that was something. But we would always, uh, my grandma would make homemade popcorn balls. No, I'm down for that. Now, and folks, if you ain't never eat a homemade popcorn ball, I feel, first off, I feel bad for you. Uh, but she would take that popcorn, and I don't know how she did it. I don't know what her recipe was, but had them, she melt them caramels down, you know, and get it all in there. But it wasn't like when she put it together, you know, it like when it when it got dry, it never would get like hard, like right. a, like you know, and that which was good, you know, it was kind of chewy. Oh man, I miss you, Momo. I miss some popcorn. Balls. Lord have mercy, I like popcorn balls. Oh too. man, Take they was good. season around mm-hmm. for me. And all, and you got to cut your jack o' lantern, folks. Now, if you don't cut your jack o' lantern, <laughs> the booger man's gonna come get you. Okay, now with that said, I got an, I got something here, and I know, I mean, you are the the world's smartest redneck. No, so I, you, I do what I can. Yeah, well, we got proof. The lady says it at the beginning That's true. of the intro. That's true. Uh, <laughs> with that said, and she knows. Yeah, she does. Um, Halloween. What's the backstory on Halloween, Bill? Why well, Halloween? My tooth. All right, Halloween comes from an old. Celtic tradition. It's the old, that's folks in Ireland. Exactly. And um, they would celebrate this time of the year with something called Samhain. And um, that was, I mean, I don't know. They, a lot of different stories about what all happened up to and including maybe some human sacrifices. But, you know, the <laughs> folks was. Was them folks was ignorant, you know, they didn't, you know, they didn't have Jesus. Yeah, they they and, made that politically uh, incorrect. Right, they, right. They gave candy out. That's right, that. yeah, they wasn't none of that. But one of the things that they believed was that at this time of the year, the barrier between the world of the living and the world of the dead was at its thinnest. And that the dead folks might just come by, all right, and want to visit. So they would all put their, you know, spooky outfits on or, or whatever, you know, to try to keep that away. And over the years, as things do, it tones down, whereas today we just spend a lot of money and uh, go out and get candy. Now, the the whole trick-or-treat, I don't – that I think that came from – they used to believe – back then people used to believe in, you know – like little goblins and and not all of them were bad. Right, right. Like you had uh they had what they call brownies. Like brownies come from they had a, a it's like a leprechaunish type thing, right? Mm-hmm. They were called brownies. Mm-hmm. And if you gave them stuff, they would do stuff for you. Like they'd they'd milk your cow while you sleep or they really? might, they might uh put your dishes up or whatever. Really? They you know help out around the house. And if you did, wasn't good to them, they do bad stuff. Mm. Trick or treat. Yeah. You see? Gotcha. So, uh, you know, all that kind of hodgepodge is together, you know, because, you know, a lot of them, you know, all the Irish come over here and, uh, well, not all of them because they still got something over there, but, you know, a, a good many of them come over here after the potato famine and uh, brought their traditions with them. Can I, I tell you this. Jack o' lanterns were not originally carved in pumpkins. Really? They were originally carved in turnips. Really? Mm-hmm. I'd be damned. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't that be uh, weird to be carving a turnip? Mm-hmm. This That's time what of they year? did. And as far as that brownie thing goes, you give them something. You can't get kids to do shit for no candy these days. No, no. They just want you to give it to them. You know, I tell you what, one of the last times before I moved out of my hometown, <laughs> It was old boy showed up there on Halloween night. Now look, it's something that he had a full beard. <laughs> <laughs> he was in eighth grade. It's all good. No, Still no, a kid. he wasn't. <laughs> he, look, he had he had a garbage bag over it, <laughs> like like he cut a hole to put his head through Creativity. for his arms. And he put that on. That was his Halloween costume. He walked up there with a Walmart bag and said, trick or treat. I said, get your old ass to work. <laughs> I said, go to work. <laughs> so you late for work right now. Yeah. That's like being disappointed when your mama don't get your socks for Christmas. Yeah. 
Been Boy, waiting on them socks all year. Are right, you <laughs> talking about all this? Let's talk a little bit about what's going on on the TV because I know you watched the other night, and I just found out yesterday what all the stink was about. The Walking Dead. Oh my God. Oh, oh, oh. The world is in an oh. Up- I, well, I'm gonna tell you something now, folks. Is he dead? I I hope not, man. It looked like it. It looked like he was gnawing on his vitals, but it could have been. It could have been that old boy that landed on top of it. And I mean, they hadn't been as much speculation on who killed JFK as to whether or not this old boy's dead. Or not. I'm telling you. I mean, really, they hadn't. I mean, they got like they got experts out looking at like angles and 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 you know things like that. It's it's crazy. I ain't ever seen nothing like it. Now, unfortunately, I have I have not watched an episode of The Walking Dead since it come on. Well, let okay. me let me just say you need to change that. But we're we gonna do it tonight. I'm, I'm gonna tell you, I, I I don't normally do this, mm-hmm. but when that happened. I physically said no. Like, I physically <laughs> did it. I, I, you know, you normally like you'll do it in your head. Right. Like I physically said, I, I really, I said no. <laughs> Lord oh, oh no, you know, because man. But the thing about that show is, you know, they ain't kill nobody that you like in a while. And right. They bad about doing that. Right. Right. You know, you can't get attached to nobody. Mm-mm. You know, I, I liked old Dale back in the first season. He was a good old dude, you know, drove the RV. Um, and I watched him zombie just <laughs> crack his chest open. Now, for those you of know. us that don't watch, can you explain exactly what The Walking Dead is all about? Well, I mean, well, what, what's, the, what's the hype all about? Well, what, I mean, what is it? Well, it's, you know, it's zombie. It started out as a zombie, pretty much a zombie show, right? Right. But the thing about it is, is you get to liking you get to wrapped up in these characters and what all they have to put up with. Cause I mean, you know, society is shut down, you know, there's zombies everywhere and they don't call them zombies. They call them walkers and nobody knows what, like what happened. Okay. Like nobody knows what the deal is. Like why all of a sudden a bunch of dead people came back and started eating people. I mean, I like, don't know. And, but all they know is they got to deal with it, you know? And, Rick Grimes is the main guy. He's a he's a policeman. Mm-hmm. He got shot, ended up in the hospital, and when he comes to, like, ain't nobody around, you know. And like he, the flowers that's in his room is dead. He's thirsty. Ain't nothing in his IV bag, mm. you know. Ain't nobody in the hospital, and he's like, okay, you know. And he's walking around in his in his little hospital gown with his, you know, with his ass out <laughs> and not knowing nothing. Right. Mm-hmm. I ain't got a gun. I ain't got nothing, you know, and comes across this door <laughs> that has spray painted. Don't open dead inside. Mm-mm. And, and it's chained up. And by that time, fingers start putting, coming through them cracks and you hear all that. Bah! I'm back there and look, I mean, you know, what the hell? You know, uh, I've always been a, a zombie movie. I, I like scary movies. I, right, I grew right. up on Mama. Mama always loved, you know, loved scary. I, I love you, Mama. She uh, raised me on scary movies. I love them. Uh, and so, you know, I remember the old Night of the Living Dead. You know, I was always like zombie movies, but uh, it's more than that now. You know, like now, like the zombies are kind of like. They kind of like mosquitoes in the fact that you you like they around and you got to swat at them. Hmm. And but the thing about it is now where where these zombies get you is you don't never know when the ones that's gonna pop out the damn closet because you know you don't know where because wherever these folks die you know if they didn't have a brain injury or, you know i.e. you know a bullet to their head or something of that nature they are gonna come back as a zombie. Right. So let's say you in the bathroom. Let's say you pull an Elvis, right? <laughs> All right, right, right. You can pull an Elvis, man. Yeah. You just blow an old ring right there on the toilet, okay? Oh, up. And let's say the door shut. Mm-hmm. All right, so you die. Well, then you come back as a zombie. 
Well, zombies don't know how to work doorknobs. Mm-mm. They don't know how to do nothing but come at you and eat. All right? They don't use tools or anything like praise you know God. They don't, but they don't, you know they they can't. Right. So uh, so you gonna be in there that bathroom mm. forever wow. until somebody opens that door. And when they open the door, all you coming them. out right. So that's that's the thing you don't you don't know. So these you know they come across a house because you know, I mean hey you run out of stuff right you I, I I done run all through my potted meat I gotta go find some more I'm hungry mm-hmm. so you go in this store. You know, well, you don't know what's in there. Right. And then you always, man, because every corner you turn around, they might be 20 of them standing there. And then they all look at you and go, ah, and here they come, you know. They don't run either. Ooh, Lord. <laughs> do you Lord. Believe, do you believe in that zombie disease? Uh, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, it's real. You think? Oh, yeah, it's coming. It's coming. Do you, I mean, I've heard you talk about Soylent Green. Soylent Green is people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Actually, they got a. Have you ever seen that movie? I've never seen that movie. What's the name of it? Soul and Green. It's the name of the movie. Uh, Charlton Heston was in it. Um, it was the last movie that. Uh, what was that old dude's name? Oh hell, I can't think of it. He was the one. I'm, yeah, copper see you never take me alive. See. Okay. okay. Uh, but anyway, it was the last movie he was in. Edward something. Anyway, uh, it'll come to me later. Anyway, uh, basically, it was in the future, and it's overpopulation. And everybody had to live in cities uh, because the 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 countryside. They say they they was trying to grow food out there. Something had done happened. Is what it is. And there was way too many people, and shit was terrible. And uh, they made the they had this the Solent Corporation made this stuff that you would eat, mm. and they'd have Solent Red and Solent Blue and whatever. And they they come out with brand new Solent Green. Try Solent Green. It's made out of plankton. Right, it's made out of plankton, uh, because this is you know that's what we we figured out how to harness that. It's out in the ocean. There's lots of it. Uh, we're gonna get the plankton, and that'll take care of our food problem. And taking Tuesday, Solent Green Day. So, uh, lo and behold, that ain't what it was made out of. Mm. What they is doing is they is taking dead folks. I right, you can in this movie. Like, you could go, they had a place that you could go if you just got tired of living, and they'd, <laughs> and they'd kill you. And they, and they, it was a real nice thing. Like, they would, uh, they, like, they asked you I what you, you well, like they, and that's what it was. And you'd, uh, you go in there, and they'd, uh, they say, uh, Edward G. Robinson was his name, the old dude. Anyway, uh, I, I told you it was going to come to me, but anyway, uh, you go in there, and they'd ask you, like, what your favorite color was and what kind of music you like. And they'd bring you in this room, and they'd lay on this table. And um, they'd, like, let's say your favorite color was blue. They'd light the room up blue. Mm. And let's say you like to listen to Led Zeppelin. They'd play Led Zeppelin. And they'd show you this movie. Of all this stuff that used to be, like little deers out there scampering <laughs> in the field, because all that shit was gone. Right, right. Right? Uh, and then, after you died, they rolled your ass out and put you in a damn garbage truck. And uh, then the garbage truck full of dead people went down to the soylent plant, and they made soylent green out of your ass. Yeah, and right, and that's what, that's what uh, and, and Charlton Heston figured out. He was a detective. He was a cop. And uh, and they figured it out that that's what it was. He 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 tracked them. You know, he, he went to the solar plant, and he come back and he's like, "Solar green is people." Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, man! It's, uh, you should see that movie. Even though I told you how it goes, you, you should really see that movie. Uh, it's it's a good movie. Yes, indeed. There's some good movies out there like that. Yeah, have you seen this uh, Krampus? Have you seen this? Uh, it's a. Uh, we actually got a, that, is it, was it about, a request uh, to interview. Uh, it's about a Christmas creature. Oh, okay. Halloween. Krampus. I thought it might have been about like that time of the month or something. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I thought too. But when it did, sorry, ladies, it was on ABC uh, Family, so I, you know, I didn't think uh, Krampus. Yeah, it's uh, it's something about it. It's a uh, director Rob Conway, and it's a it's just a Santa Claus of a dark. Uh, age basically instead of giving shit, he's taking shit. Ah, he kill you. It sounds stupid. I don't think we're gonna do that interview. <laughs> <laughs> it 
So basically, he's just like I'm a, just being real. So he's just he's just like somebody just come do a home invasion. He just show up, bust in your house and take some shit. Right. Okay, well, I, I mean, got you. Yeah, and, and, he, and he's wearing like this mask. He looks like I don't know. He looks like Satan, but it's supposed to be oh, Christmas geez. time. Yeah, I mean, what a horrible <laughs> concept for a movie. Well, you know, they had uh, when I was a kid. I when all the all the slasher movies were out, right? Friday Thirteenth and uh, Halloween's and all that. Should well, be. right. Well, of course, Christmas couldn't be outdone, Mm-mm. and they had some called Silent Night. And it was a, it was a Santa Claus, it was a dude in a Santa Claus suit just going around killing people. I said, I think they made a half a dozen of them. And like, I don't know, I, folks who are old enough to remember a video store. Okay? I remember one. Okay. You, like, you, you will know this. Now, one dead giveaway. You didn't have to, you, you could know nothing about the movie. Right. All right. Let's say there wasn't nothing written on any of the backs of any of the movies that you didn't know nothing about any of them. Right. The ones that came in that big box sucked. <laughs> Every one of them. Yeah, you remember? Every that? damn one of them. If they come in that big box. Why would they come in the big box? I think, I think, I think personally the big box was cheap because most of them movies was made for about $30, and I think most of that was spent on electricity. Because and, they was actually two movies. They was, uh, you know, the Triple X movie and the other one. Right, right. In the big box, and then they was the big box. Right. Explains a lot. Right, but the big box, if it came in the big box, it wasn't going to be no good. And bless her heart, my mama would get them damn movies. That, the scary movies, not the dirty ones. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, let's clear that up right now. So, uh, see, and I'd tell her, say, Mama, did this, what the box look like? She said, What do you mean? I said, What did it look like? Was it the big box? Well, yeah, I said, It ain't going to be no good. And guess what? It wasn't no good. <laughs> Phil Patterson, guitar player, Ron yeah. Stalker, okay. I see Phil, he's got like two, I don't know, shoe boxes full of VHS tapes. Mm-hmm. So, so I asked him one night about them, and what it was was I think his wife was making him get rid of junk. Well, these were VHS, it was movies that he had recorded like on the Sci Fi Channel. And right. He enjoyed watching. Those were horrible too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, one was, it was called Sharknado the, and that. Yeah, Kill Dozer. Yeah. It was about a possessed bulldozer. Right, right. You know, which leads me to one of my favorite movies of all time is Maximum Overdrive. Maximum Overdrive. Remember that? Hell yeah, man. ACDC. I mean, they had a whole damn record on account of that shit. I was scared to death. My dad drove the truck. with the big green face on it. Yeah. I tell you, the one you had to watch was that damn Jeep with the uh, gun on it. Mm Mm-hmm. You know? That's what you had to watch. That's how much mow your ass down. That was uh, that was pretty. Uh, Who was, that, was, was in that? that? Was that was Emilio Estevez in that? I think he was. I think Emilio was. Emilio. I, I think, think Emilio he was. was. He was a. Uh, I, I don't. I don't think they had many like big name actors in it of that. No, time. but you had to have. Now one. they are. Yeah, I think Emilio was in it. Cause I, yeah, he was. Cause I remember him pumping diesel. Yeah. And he pumped diesel. That's what he made a deal with him. Yeah, he just a pump. He just pumped gas all, mm. you know, all the time. Go find that maximum overdrive. maximum overdrive. That's a good one. Yes, indeed. Now I'm gonna tell you one that you probably ain't seen. This you wanna go things like that. They had. Have you ever seen the movie Duel? No, I haven't. All right, Robert. Who was he? We'll yeah. look it up. Ooh. Anyway, Duel was about this old boy that um. This 18 wheeler got after him. Like, everywhere he went, the damn thing was trying to run him off the road. Okay, yes, I do remember this movie. Yeah, and uh, and you never saw who was driving it. You never saw who was driving it. Uh, it was a, it was a good one. Dennis Weaver. That's who was okay. in it. Okay. Dennis Weaver. Yeah, um, you never, uh, you never saw no boy who was driving it. And, um, man, it was just, you know, it was bad. You know, he tried to get away from the damn thing, and it was just like his old nasty looking old old Mack truck, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it just just coming after him, steady coming after. Him. You know, he finally, you know, he finally won. But uh, that's another good one, you know, in movies like that. 
It's suspense. Not really a, what I'd call a horror movie, but it's suspenseful. Yeah, it's pretty sick. Yeah, I mean, I remember, I remember. It's a lot remember. better than uh, Convoy. I did I not think. like. No, I didn't but, care me, for that Convoy. Yeah, nobody. Well, anybody with any sense didn't like that movie. The song was awesome. Yeah. That's, See, that's, you can't take a song and make a movie out of it. No. You know? Man, there was a lot of stars in that movie. It was. Chris Christopherson was in that movie. Yes, indeed. The old boy who played uh, Paulie off of Rocky was in that movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was, uh, uh, was a female. I can't think of what her name was. But she was like a big deal back then. I mean, they had like some stars, some, some legitimate movie people. Did they play the song? I don't even remember. Yeah, they, they did the somewhere in there. Convoy? Yeah. I played a wedding in La at the... Uh, the old Bighorn building out there one time, and you know the dun 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 uh-huh. all that shit, and they'd say their vows, and then they was walking back out. Tell they me played that. convoy. <laughs> yeah, this, yeah, this is rubber duck. Yeah, you know, and they walking that back down the aisle. This is the, mercy sakes alive. I Looks bet you like we got us a convoy. Bet you we're gonna play wonderful tonight for that first song. That's right. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Nothing against anybody that likes that stuff. Uh, absolutely just, not. Absolutely yeah, not. But it's one of them things. Yeah, we just one of them things you know. Some of the most haunted places in the world is here in Louisiana. Do absolutely. You know one of them in particular I just actually pulled up here is the Bonnie and Clyde ambush site. Have you ever heard anything about that? Yeah, up in Arcadia. Up in, up in the Arcadia, north part of the state. I think the name of the town, which I had it here a while ago, it was um, Gibsland. Yeah, uh, it's up in the north part of the state. Now, it don't make any sense sitting here reading the story, but it says that uh, on a full moon, you can hear the sounds of gunfire. Mm-hmm. Well, oh, shit, that might just be people out there coon hunting. It could be, which I, it don't make any sense because Bonnie and Clyde, they, they died in the, it was bright early morning. Yeah. You know, when they was shot down. <laughs> he gunned them down, son. That was something. What do you, I mean, I know it's Halloween themed and everything, but real quick, the Bonnie and Clyde thing. What what do you think about that? I mean, when they, uh, you think a lot of the stories that they, because you watch the movie and a, a lot of the stories that the media was telling at that time, they claim wasn't really true. Yeah, I don't know. I I I'm gonna tell you where they messed up was shooting police. That's where they messed up. Yeah, and especially because I'm gonna tell you something. Back then, it wasn't none of this, you know, like it is now, where it seems like it's a fun thing to do. You know, you, you wasn't too far gone out of the old west, okay? back then mm-hmm. and so like you had people <laughs> you had people still living that had been that had lived through the quote unquote <laughs> old west yeah so they really didn't care right you know and so they just said well that's fine we just catch them coming down the road and open up <laughs> bar on them you know <laughs> and that was the end of bonnie and clyde hmm. um yeah i mean you, you didn't have all the stuff we have today i mean you know Law enforcement officers in, in, you know, our day and time have to abide by a whole lot of stringent, you know, rules. I mean, I know some of y'all out there don't believe that, but just trust me, it's true. And uh, one of which is called the force continuum, and, and every department has their little deal, and it tells like, okay, if bad guy does this, police officer can do this, all right? And it no, and <laughs> <laughs> you can't just like open up with a fully automatic weapon right on somebody just going down the street right? right no matter what they had done you know you gotta you know these 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 rules has got but back then it wasn't you know so they was free and clear you know have you heard of any any local uh i guess uh well they got the uh um, myrtles out there in st francisville they do and uh which hey folks if you uh St. Francisville is a beautiful area. Very much so. Turn of the in. state. Uh, a lot of old antebellum homes out there. A lot of pretty land out mm-hmm. there. Um, the Myrtles is a, it's a former plantation. Um, and supposedly is just haunted as hell. It's got ghosts just running all through it. Still uh, as a matter of fact, this time of year, they have a little deal and you can, which I think you can any time of the year, but, like they have like it's like a little Halloween deal, and you spend a night out there. I ain't going to, mm-hmm. but uh, you, you can. Well, I know you can. I have a, a friend of mine. I used to work with him. He spent many a night out there. He said he ain't never seen nothing weird, but uh, I ain't doing it. 
Now they claim that they they have the house part, and you can actually rent an upstairs room in the mm-hmm. house. Mm-hmm. And um, nope. Tanya and I went up there once. I didn't see any ghosts. Mm-hmm. Didn't I mean it was cool? I mean the experience was cool. I guess to see. I mean because the shit they're saying. I mean it's actually it's not made up. It's no, it's stuff that happened. I yeah, mean they've been you know folks die and get killed out there and you know and, and all that and um. You know, and that spook you out, but I ain't, you know, I ain't staying up in there. Mm-hmm. I don't like, look, man, uh, guns, knives, baseball bats, all that don't bother me. All right. I don't like needles and I don't like dead folks. All right? <laughs> I'm, on, I'm with you, bro. I don't believe in all that too much, but you know, I don't look. I, well, I told you, I told you what I seen. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's all I've ever, you know, physically seen. But uh, that's not, I don't, mm-mm. no. Here's something pretty interesting, and I've seen this. This ain't this ain't the first time I've seen it. It's just it's it's Manshack Swamp. How did about Manshack? It? It's cursed. It's haunted. Oh shit! It said it's, it's known to locals as the Ghost Swamp. Well, I know. The only thing I know about it is Middendorf's are sitting down there in it, and that's some good catfish. Well, used to I think there used to be a town there. I think one of the hurricanes. Well, now. You had the town of, Actually, took well, it. Rudock, which took is down out. that way. Right. Yeah, they had a hurricane that took it out. Uh, I don't know if anybody died, but I do know that, uh, as a matter of fact, I read a little article on it here a little while back, and uh, there's nothing down there now. It's just like a boat launch. That's it. Right. According but, to this, it was haunted by Julie Brown, a Creole voodoo priestess. Hmm. In 1915, reports say she cursed the town, singing odd songs about it. And when she down the day she died, there was a hurricane that triggered a thirty foot tidal wave. It killed most of the town folk. You believe that? That sounds like a little bit of horse shit to me. But I, y'all don't y'all don't fool around that voodoo now. Mm-hmm. I don't don't truck with that. She was buried in the grave next to the swamp. I wonder if it's still there. Stories say you can still hear the screams of the hurricane victim. I've heard ah! some screams out there. You know, riding around now. I mean, it is spooky down there. Well, you know, legend really has it that back in the day they had they had the mob bosses used to sit up there in Menendore, from what I understand. Have you ever heard anything about that? Ah. From New Orleans. And they say there's many people been, you know. Well, I mean, I tell you what, if I had to pick. Gator bait. If I had to pick a spot to sit, that'd be good as any because the beer is cold and the fish is good. Now, and I was going to say you that right see now. shit because it's dark out Mm-mm, there. Bro. It damn is. Um, yeah, I ain't never heard that. I mean, I really yeah. ain't. That's the first time I ever seen it going through haunted places here in the state of Louisiana. I don't really have too much of them ghost experiences. Well, like, like I say, I'm I'm glad I only got to one. <laughs> you know, Mama told me that she uh she seen she said that she saw her grandpa in our old house and he'd been long dead. Do you think that's possible? Do you think that uh, there's so uh, you know there's a thin line between? I us got and enough sense to know that I don't know too much, mm. and uh, I got. I, I mean, I don't know. You start talking about that kind of stuff. Who knows what's possible, man? I don't know. Mm-mm. You know. I mean, I can tell you what you know. I can tell you this, all right? Even it's even mentioned in the Bible. Now we are getting to the okay, even to the talking the to meat, the, talking to dead folks. It's frowned upon by the good Lord. It's the and, dark experience, right? And it's- and I mean, I mean, there's mention of witches in in the Bible. I mean, I, I ain't making this up, folks. You know, this I ain't saying they running around today. I'm saying. That it was mentioned in the Bible. So, you know, it ain't like this is just like fairy tale somebody just made. I mean, this, you know, I guess, well, I guess if you think the Bible is a fairy tale, I guess it is. I mean, whatever. You you take that as you will. What I'm saying is I ain't going to force nothing down your throat. What I'm telling you is, you know, it speaks of it, you know, and, and, you know, I don't, I ain't, I ain't fooling with that. Mm Mm-mm. 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 No, I love. Let me tell you something. There ain't nobody in this world loved their grandma more than I did. 
I don't want to see her. But I don't want to see her Mm-mm. until it's time for me to go. Mm-hmm. And then we'll visit. All right? But <laughs> yeah. not till then. Have some popcorn, Bob. I want that, some popcorn. And I want that chicken. I had Mama could fry some chicken. She could take, look, she could take one chicken and feed everybody in this neighborhood. You know? Mm. <laughs> so she, now, you might have to ask what it is like you, you she would you know she would cut it depending on how many people she's trying to feed she cut it funny you know so you, <laughs> you might not know what a, like if it was a breast or a thigh or whatever you know yes indeed uh but um yeah i'm gonna have some of that well you know for me here's the thing you know you see things and a lot of times it, just want to leave it alone mm-hmm. that was that's my thing if it's a ghost i'll let it be yeah i don't you know I always had this, my, what used to scare me more. I don't know where I got it from, man. I mean, it ain't like I ever saw it, you know. But I was so scared of, like, seeing a ghost and that some bitch, not, not just seeing one, like, like he's just floating by, right, minding his own business. Mm-hmm. I had this dread fear of seeing something like that and that somebody's looking dead at me. I, that spook, it spooks me. I just got wow. a chill. I just got a chill. I, that, that spooked me more than anything else. I don't know why. I don't like to say, I don't know where it comes. I don't know. Maybe I saw it in a movie or what, but I had this just, I it just, ooh. You know, spooked the shit out of me. You know, because look, man, it's one thing if he's down there and he's minding his own business, <laughs> and I'm gonna get the hell on the way, right? Yes. But when I somebody's like, if he looks at me and says, "Hey, you what's know? up, Bill?" Yeah, Mm-mm. my tooth. <laughs> no, I'm out. Yes, indeed. I just never could. I don't know what it was. I, I never was. Uh, I never did get into the spirits or the ghost or anything. Mm-hmm. Like I said, some things have happened. Happened at our house. I talked about it right. on uh, the week Toby. before last show, right? And uh, you know, the Peter Crunker thing and all yeah. that, which was probably designed just to scare the shit out of us. But what, whatever, well, of course it was. But uh, just like Sack Billy was designed to scare me, you yeah. know. But um, that's yeah. <laughs> Peter Crunker and he eats Teddy. That's just great. It was, <laughs> it was, and it was scary as hell. Too. And with all of that said, it's Halloween. You got to enjoy yourself. It's it's for the kids, really, yeah. and for the adults. Now, Look, me personally, I, are you dressing up? Yeah, you will be. I'm going to be in costume. I see. That's they asked me the other way. I was supposed to play music Saturday night. They, you know, asked if I was dressing up. I said, mm-hmm. I'm not wearing my good shit out here. I used, man, yet. I used to love. <laughs> I used to love when a gig would fall on Halloween, or really? when you played, or when you played a joint that that had a Halloween party. Um, like back in the day, we used to play out there with these when they, they, everybody would have a big Halloween party, right? And I dress that whole band would dress up, man, and uh, it was great. You know, I, that was fun. That was fun, you know. Mm, no, nah, I, I went as this voodoo priest one time. I scared the shit out of people. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Now I see, like, uh, you know, like Saturday night or this past weekend, you play. People are already dressing up, and I just want to say to the I, he looks like he looked like somebody's grandpa or somebody's uncle or whatever. This guy he wears dressing up like Santa Claus for Halloween. <laughs> Is not a good Halloween costume. No, that's not good. No. Well, and like, it, unless like it was like a, like did he have like a big like like something that happened to his face or was it like a zombie Santa? Claus? Well, it started out before he started drinking. He was dressed up like <laughs> Santa Claus, and then later on that night, the beard was half cocked. It looked yeah. like somebody run over the back of him. He looked somebody, like he had a car mark on somebody the back shit, of his shirt. Somebody shit in his pants. <laughs> yeah. You know, and and then you got to stop Tanya from like she's recording him because he's so drunk and he's staggering. And you're like, don't do. You know, she's laughing, point telling everybody. You know, he was bad Santa, and then like pretty the much. Movie, yeah. And then there was Obi Wan Kenobi from nice. Livingston. And that nice. was it. Would have been nice, I guess. You know, you can't. I mean, I understood what he was, but what he did was he took a. a he looked like he took his son's um, karate gi. Yeah. The top of it. That's pretty much what it was. <clears throat> and put it, he, yeah, but it, it was homemade. Hood on? No, he didn't. No, he'd probably got lynched if he put that white hood on where we was at, Jack. <laughs> I tell you, that wouldn't have been nice at all. That's but, funny. Uh, it's, it's been a hell of a week, hell of a night. 
Yeah. We broke the top, uh, get away from the Halloween stuff real quick. We broke top 100. We are in the top 100. We're number 99 out of a bajillion podcast. And first, first off, thank you. If you have, if you have taken the time to review us on any, yeah, we got whatever it. thing you listening to us on. I appreciate that. We appreciate that. We really do. Especially, and on if you haven't, take a second or two, you know, and push that five star. Now you know, you don't want to give us three star. No. Give us five stars. First off, and you know, it don't cost you nothing. Mm-mm. You know, and uh, it, it really does. You know, evidently, I, I, we was talking about it a while ago. I mean, we just sit here and yammer about stuff, and people evidently just love it. They like it. And I like it. I like doing it. You know, it's fun. Uh, but we sure would appreciate it if you give us a, a good review. Uh, if you're going to give me a bad review, Oh, uh, well, I, you know, you kiss my ass. <laughs> you can go to www.radiorandomnetwork.com and you can uh, click on re- review the show right there at the top. It's a little yeah. button that's set up and with the little platform where you can hear us. Uh, speaking of which, Google Play, we're going to be on there uh, this yeah, tomorrow, this week. Deal. And then you got, uh, I don't know, we got over 20 something reviews on uh, iTunes already. And uh, we want to thank each and every one of you guys for Absolutely. that five-star review and helping us get on the iTunes charts. That helps with the algorithms. And uh, among all this, you know, I was talking to That's a guy. That's your new band. What's that? The algorithms. Mm-mm. It'd be a good name, though. It'd be a damn good name when you spell the rhythm part like rhythm. It would be. I was talking Full to a guy ideas. the other day, and he said, you know, it don't really. That That's good you got on the iTunes charts, but, you know, I mean, that's not that much of a. You know, he says not a whole lot to brag about. And to me, damn it, it is, and I'm gonna brag about it. Why? Who's and I'm gonna push how it. is that not something to brag about? Well, I mean, you know, he says everybody, you know, but it's not everybody. It's it's a hundred. Everybody what? Everybody gets a you know everybody's on the gets to be on the the charts. But I've been doing this for almost shit a, a little while now. <laughs> yeah, it ain't everybody. It's He's us. Full of shit. Yeah, he is. I, I, I mean, his show has never been on the charts. I went back and looked. Uh-huh. I even went back and looked. Well, I thought archives. everybody got a chance. Exactly. So he just ain't got his yet. That's what That's it is. That's all it is. He can kiss yeah, my he ass. He kiss my damn along ass. I don't the, even know some bitch is. Along with the public ass. relations um, people that handle um, Gunner and uh, Kane. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind saying that. Well, let, let me, it's, you want to talk about it? Well, you know what? I'm just going to say when I when I follow up with people, I try to do it as ASAP. Right. They don't. I don't like to wait. Y'all, all right, look, and I've been. And I've, I've told been everybody. It's the I second have, time. I'm sad it's about it. It's the second time it's happened. But look, we were supposed to tonight for Halloween, and I was damn excited. I don't mind telling you. Uh, we was going to talk to the man who played Leatherface was, and the original Texas. Right, Gunnar Hansen from the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And Kane Hodder, who was one of the guys who played Jason Voorhees in some of the Friday the 13th movies. As a matter of fact, when I think of Jason, I think of his name. I was, right, you he know, played him. Now, there's been several people that's played him over the years. And as a matter of fact, I think Kane didn't come in until like, late in the game, like uh, maybe number six or seven. Freddie, uh, no, Jason takes Manhattan. Manhattan. So that was like number seven. And uh, But anyway, uh, he was very good at it. And um, I, I was, I mean, just to use a surfing term, stoked, you mm-hmm. know, to talk to these people. But something happened, and we had to reschedule, and they just kind of dropped out of sight. And I, it kind of upset me, you know. Me too. Uh, I was hoping they was going to call, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, but you know what? I'm going to tell you something. I'm still going to watch the Texas Chainsaw. Yeah, uh, it's not those guys' fault. No. And, um uh, I was gonna, I was gonna ask old, old Leatherface what, what kind of what brand of chain, well, what kind of chainsaw he favors? If he favors like the big heavy, like the big steels and Husqvarna's, or, <laughs> or does he go for more like a one of them lightweight McCullough chainsaws? Yes. Or does he like the pooling? Uh, and and I was gonna ask him what his favorite barbecue sauce was. There you go. I thought that would be good. 
And I, I was just going to ask Kane Hodder about his depression he had after he was casted for the Freddy vs. Yeah. Jason movie. Yeah. I wanted to know. I mean, but it's no big deal because you know why? Our friend T. Graham Brown is listening. That's right. And Monday, no, was it last Friday, I got an email from T. Graham and the management, and they sent us some some, some a goodie bag. We got some so goodies. You know, and we might give one away around Christmas, but uh, you know, if you if you get a chance, visit Amazon or iTunes or what have you, and pick up T. Graham Brown's new Christmas CD. Yeah, it's good. It's good, and it's T. Graham Brown. It can't be bad. It's T. Graham Brown. Right. T. Graham Brown get up there and bang on a pie pan. It'd be good. And he make it sound good. He have soul. It, right. He have soul with it. Yes, indeed. And you can go back and listen to. Tuesday show when I talked to T.G. Shepard. Mm-hmm. It ain't a long show. It's about 15 minutes, but uh, he's talking about his new album that's going to be coming out, or it's already out. It's got um, duets with uh, George Jones, Jerry Lee Lewis, Delbert McClinton, one of my personal favorites. I like old Kelly Dave. Lang, which is T.G. Shepard's wife. There's Merle Haggard's even on there. Mm. Oak Ridge Boys. He's got a star-studded lineup for that one. And Hank's doing a, doing another one, too, so I, I'm I'm interested to see how that's going to go. Me too. I did submit all of our media stuff. There. You know, the thing about Hank is you, I don't know, Hank, to he me. not give a damn. Well, but to me, he went through a period there where it just, I don't know, I don't know what the deal was, but it like, it wasn't, it just wasn't real good to me. I mean, I, I ain't speaking blasphemy. All right? mm-mm, mm-mm. I'm just saying, you know, like, you know. I, like the naked woman, naked women in beer kind of shit. You know, I just, it, it run, I mean, I, I get it. You know, it's how he can do what he wants, but it, I don't know. It, it, it didn't have, you know, I mean, I come up on, you know, whiskey bent and hell bound and, right. and that kind of deal. And, you know, it's, it's, that's hard to, it's hard to top that, man. Well, you know, I think he just sometimes. OD in Denver and all that, you know. Mm-hmm, the pill. I, yeah, I think I don't know. Maybe he just like I don't know if he just owed somebody a record or what, you know. I think sometimes that's what that it happened. was with some of these guys, you know. And then sometimes he would come out with something that would just blow you, blow your mind. Right. I, I think sometimes it just. I'm Tell you what, it. I don't, you know, I don't know, you know, folks, if if you ain't ever seen a man play, uh, and he ain't bad about you know being drunk now no more. I mean, mm-hmm. back in the day, now you never didn't know, but uh, he he, from what I understand, he don't do all that no more. But uh, he can play about anything he puts his hands on. Oh, yes. And play it well. Well, you know, when he was a kid, I mean, the stories that you hear and stuff about Merle Kilgore, who was actually, I guess, his handler, so mm-hmm. to speak. But his his mom, I mean, his mom, like the big stars, Fats Domino, would come in and Jerry Lee Lewis would come in and stay. They'd stay at the house. They'd, right. You know, so you got little Hank running around with, I mean, his piano instructor was Fats Domino. Right. I mean, people want to play like Fats Domino. You don't go get a free lesson from Fats Domino. Right. He did. And it's the same thing with, like, uh, you know, Waylon. And I've heard stories of Waylon and, and him being backstage, and they mm-hmm. thought it would be funny to get him drunk when he was, like, 10 years old. So, right. I mean, man, when you hear Whiskey Bent Hellbound, O.D. in Denver, uh, all the old school songs, old school Hanks, it, it connects because it was real. He's telling the truth. Yeah. You know, he's singing about naked women and beer. Well, we right. all want to see that. We can relate. But right, but but those songs, he was telling a story. He was telling you something. That exactly. Exactly. And that's what he's all about. That's what I like. I like a good storyteller. I not too. Not, that, not like gay, nothing against gay, but not like James Taylor storyteller. I don't like that kind of storytelling. Well, you know, I'm I'm going I'm to a, I'm a say I like a few James Taylor songs. There's a few. There's, there's uh, I do. I just, I don't know. In my just mind, don't. I'm going to Carolina. <laughs> I, I like that one. I do. Have you heard? I know you haven't heard it, but it's actually, I got to listen to it the other day. Somebody Luke Bryan got a new song. I yes. Ain't, I ain't heard it. He he got somebody's, it's it's actually, it ain't bad. Is it called I'm Scared of Mud Too? It's called Strip It Down. <laughs> That'd strip be, it down. Strip It Down. What's, what's, it's just like, you know what, dude? Let me tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where it pisses me off, okay? Yeah. My what I listen to. Uh-huh. I listen to soul, right. R&B. I I'm not I'm not talking about 
what's on the radio. I'm, right. I'm talking about Marvin. I'm talking about some real shit. Right. Marvin sees. I'm a ghetto man. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, or uh, you know, some other old school shit. ZZ Hill. Right. The real stuff. Mm-hmm. This shit has been around. This music has been around, and you know, you come up now. You had like remember H Town. Mm-hmm. Knocking the boots. You know? Right. They, right. I've had them on here before, but. That's cool. Uh, yeah. And, you know, all that, that's real. That's real stuff. And it's real R&B. And, and now they got these guys like Luke Bryan, these country guys. They're trying to steal that. I don't want to say steal it. They're just trying to um, incorporate that sound. Yeah. And it ain't the song. Now, Luke Bryan singing it was like that mop or the wall singing mm-hmm. it. That's how about how much feeling it had in it because he's white. I mean, not white as Ray. I mean, his soul. Yeah. He he ain't got none. Oh, I know. But the song, good. I could take it and make it a hit. Yeah. If somebody would listen, you yeah. know what I mean. You know. I mean, I'm I'm with you, man. <laughs> I'm just ranting. I'm just ranting. It's been a long week. On the on the good side, though, uh, I want to send a shout out to Tommy Chong of Cheech and Chong. Yeah. Um, Tommy just recently had surgery. I think last week. I don't know what's the matter with him. He's had he's had some uh pancreatic uh troubles. I wanna say maybe he had a cancer scare or something oh, like that. Oh my word. But to me, you know, Tommy Chong is like an icon. Oh, absolutely. I got brave and sent in a, a request and Good. I got an answer back. Yeah. And they're gonna set it up. I'll be damned. There, it's going to be now. And then the cool thing about it was because I sent the request. I was, it was unknown to me about his, him, him having surgery or recovering. Right, from surgery. Yeah. So when they sent back, Mr. McLean, we'd love to get this on the books, blah, blah, blah. Great. Mm-hmm. So when I go back, you know, a couple of days later or a day later, they act, they messaged me again, letting me know he was having surgery, but they're definitely, we're definitely going to have before the end of the year. Tommy Chong will be on the Russell and Mud Team show. I'll be damned. And I I'm can't working, wait for that. And I'm working on John Anderson, too, because I think I like me, you, guys. and John Anderson sitting here talking would be awesome. Oh, I think it would, too. Especially I, you and John Anderson. I like old John Anderson. You know you know who he uh, seems to be pretty good uh, friends with, old uh, Hillbilly Jim? Yeah. Who, uh, the former wrestler. And for folks that don't know, uh, he has had a show on uh, Sirius, you know, Sirius XM Radio on the Outlaw Country Station, which is one I pretty much listen to, uh, as long as the wife's not in the car. She really don't care for it to me. <laughs> um, but I do. I listen to it. I'm trying to get my little niece hooked on it. She likes a few of the things, and it's it's it's, it's cool watching her. Kind of, she's like, oh, well, that's kind of that song was like actually about something. I said, yeah, <laughs> how about that, huh? You know, you just don't have to just. You know, bang on a drum and go, you know, hookity hookity or whatever. Right, you know? right. <laughs> you know, not all, not all songs sound like that. No, no. But anyway, uh, and uh, anyway, he'll be the gym, you know, has had a show on there for, I think, about 10 years. He's been there for a while. And uh, anyway, uh, him and John Anderson seem to be, I, I've heard him interview him, and it's, he, they seem to be like fairly decent friends, mm-hmm. you know. But uh, I like old John Anderson. I do. I tell you what, I think my favorite, well, I, I always like Black Sheep. Remember we used to do that? Yes, yes. You know, and Wild Chicken. Wild and Blue. Yeah, Wild and Blue, I think, was my favorite. Really? Yeah. Uh, and then that one, uh, what was the one? Uh, oh, hell, it was like a date, like 1959 or something. something I know what you're talking about. You know about. what I'm talking about? I know what you're talking about. I can't remember the name of the song. It was, it was like a, a good, throwback. Yeah, it mm-hmm. was a good tune. Uh but I think Wild and Blue was my favorite. It's just the the whole the way the song sounded. I don't know. It's was, it was what I liked about it. Um, but I remember uh, Swinging was such a big hit. They actually had t shirts. Mm-hmm. Like and and where I'm from, I <laughs> folks they wasn't no Walmart. Then you go to the truck stop. No, you went to the <laughs> co-op. Oh, really? <laughs> you went to the co-op. Come on. And they sold hee haw overall. And they had them swinging shirts. They also had Dukes of Hazard shirts. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah. John uh, John Snyder don't live far. He don't. He's a busy man. Oh no, yeah, he's busy. He's making movies. Apparently. 
He's always got doing something going on. We pass through there every once in a while. And see where he's he, uh, out there. They say he comes to town and gets coffee. It's possible. I mean, they said he's a cool guy. Yeah. You know, uh, once you get to know him. Man. Well, he's, man, he's Bo Duke. You know, he was supposed to, uh, at one time I was supposed to meet with him. And uh, I had to cancel that. Mm. But uh, that's that's another story. Mm-hmm. Another time. I like to say, you know, he, he's, a, he's a Louisiana boy now. So. Yes, indeed. So, Halloween night, here we go. And uh, I'm going to watch me some scary movies. Did you watch, I, I seen you were having a marathon with Friday the 13th. Oh, yeah. Did you go yeah. through well, all I got of them? through four of them. And I conked out. But you know what? The uh, cause I bought them. They had them on sale at Walmart. Mm-hmm. It was uh, two. Uh, you got they they come two to a pack. So and they was five dollars a piece. Right. So I got the first two for five dollars and the second two for five dollars. And you know, part three was in three D. Really? They put two pairs of three D glasses in that thing. Come on. And you can watch it in three D, or you can watch it regular. Of course, when you watch it regular, it kind of looks stupid because like. Like they, people do stupid. Like in in three D movies, you do stuff that's like it's supposed to come out at you, right? Right. So and stuff that you might not do normally, right? So like, oh boy, like he just like poke my panel out there, mm-hmm. you know. Well, if you're not watching it in three D, it's like why is he doing that? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> but if you watch it in three D, you're like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> what um now the funny thing about the Jason things is a little uh I guess a little history Jason lesson here. Did not like extramarital sex. And he did he didn't actually put the mask on until movie number three. three. That's when he got the hockey mask. And the, the first one he had a paper bag over his head. Well well the first one he was No, the man. second one. It was his mama yeah, killing his mama the first was one. killing folks in the first one. And then she had her head chopped off. You know, Jason was kind of a sad case. He lived in that little shack. Mm-hmm. Uh, he lived in that little shack. Well, of course, first off, somebody's drowned. <laughs> you know, which Poor is a fella. hell of a hell of a way to go. Poor fellow. Yeah, and then yeah, and then he come back. He lived in that little shack and killed his mama. All he had was her head and that sweater. Mm-hmm. And he put that in there. Had him a little shrine. Now, I don't know what got him to just, you know, decide he just need to kill everybody he come across. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, it's like, and, and, you know, it's kind of like old Michael Myers in the Halloween things. You know, like Freddie, he went after a certain usually type people, right? Mm-hmm. I, I, I was a Freddie fan because, you know, we kind of smart at it. You know, you know, I liked old Jason, Michael Myers, because they showed up ready to work. They didn't, they didn't need to say nothing. Uh you know, they just gonna do some business. But um Well Michael Myers was after his sister, right? Right, right. Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah. Who was just plumb down I am gonna tell you something. That woman looks better now mm-hmm. than she did then. <laughs> and that's saying something. Cause she got she she got to be sixty years old. Mm-hmm. But uh she, she was bless her heart, she was ugly back then. Mm-hmm. But uh anyway you know, Michael Myers and Jason, like, it just, they just kill everybody they come across. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, if you happened in their path, you was going to die. And, and I, I don't know. I don't, I mean, I don't know what got him that mad, you know, but I can tell you this. If you was having sex on one of the movies, you was going to die. He's a, he's a goer. You was going to die. If you saw a woman's titties, she was going to die. Mm-hmm. All right. And if they was doing it, they was going to die, and he's going to get both of you in one lick. Because he had it. They was always like a damn harpoon or something laying around. <laughs> and he'd, yeah, he'd just <laughs> stick it right through them. Yeah. Together again. That's right. Yes, indeed. It would have been nice to have the guest, and I do want to apologize. On well, my you know, it is what it is. You, you know. got to hear us talk. Yes, indeed. It would have been really, I, I, really I, I, nice. I'll be... I'll be uh, all right, here's here's Jason. I'll be Jason. <laughs> yeah. All right, and now I'll be uh, Leatherface. <laughs> yes, indeed. So now we've had them both on tonight. Well, you know, I really would have loved to have uh, Sid Haig on. Who, oh, who played um, Captain Spaulding. And sent in a request, but unfortunately he's 
got some major health issues he's dealing with, mm. and he actually has retired from the uh, comic or the the, the cons, the mm -hmm. fright fest or whatever. Yeah. He was actually in uh, Biloxi, I think, week before last. It was the last one, from what I understand. Mm. But with all of that said, it, you know, it, it's always fun to sit here and talk to Mud Tooth. I mean, we well, got. Well, I, I enjoy it. It's a, it's the Halloween special. It's a big old Halloween hoot and holler. It's the best. Of, it's better than what I had last year. That's for damn sure. <laughs> David Blaith. You ever heard of David Blaith? Why do I know that name? David Blaith is a film writer and director from New Zealand. And you talk about trying to get on schedule with him. Oh, I bet. And he actually was a writer, and he's the creator of the White Power Ranger. Okay. And he was also a... So, like, he didn't create the rest of them, he just created... No, nah, he was the one, one that wrote in the White Ranger uh, oh. into the scripts. He, he was a writer. Okay, for okay. them, and well. then he was. Uh, he also had some films that was supposed to be. Now, according to the release, it they were uh, cult uh, horror classics. One was called uh, Angel Mine, and another one was. Um, hell, it was such a classic. I don't re even remember the name. Well, of it. I ain't never heard that. Part. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> but uh, I, I didn't know. Yeah, so you know, I had him on. It was pretty else. interesting. It was pretty interesting. Something else, folks. If you ain't, if you ain't done it. If you ain't never seen it, I think everybody ought to see this movie at least once. And why not? It, why not on Halloween? Take a break. If you don't like scary movies, okay? If you say, you know what? I don't like scary movies. I don't like being scared. Uh, I don't enjoy pissing in my pants. Mm -mm. Whatever the case. Watch the Rocky Horror Picture Show. I believe this is its like 40th anniversary, I think. Okay, don't hold me to that, but I think and folks it's the strangest damn movie you'll ever see mm -hmm. and uh but it is funny um if you go see it in the theater you know they do all the stuff like when it rains they shoot each other with water pistols and all that right right stuff. like it's a whole deal that everybody does i've never been to that i hear it's a it's a fun time uh but they they some strange folks in there uh but anyway you know if you don't like scary movies do yourself a favor and watch that. I, I, I mean, I think it's, you know, for all of its strangeness, I like it. Um, you know, it's got some funny parts in it. The whole thing's not good, but it's pretty good. Yeah. I've never seen it. Might really? I'm going to watch it. But actually, Tanya and I have a plan. We just got done with binge watching pretty much. Uh -huh. uh, that's our thing at night from 9 o'clock to, to midnight. Every binge night. Watch. We watched. We just got done with the Friday Night Lights series. Okay. Okay, which kind of got me interested in watching football. Mm hmm All right. So now we're going to start with The Walking Dead, and we're going to try it. I think you'll like it. <clears throat> and the reason is because, you know, social, everything just blew up about right. us. Right. I think you'll like it. I hope so. Yeah, I'm not really into the zombie thing, but we'll, well see what's up. The zombies, the thing about, <laughs> excuse me, the thing about the zombies is, as long, all right, there's two kinds of zombie movies. There are the first kind is the traditional Night of the Living Dead, The Walking Dead zombies. They kind of shuffle around, and where they get you is numbers. Okay. okay? That's how they get you. Because you see, like, you look, you peek out your window, and there's, you know, a dead dude shuffling down the street, and you say, oh, man, hell, there's a zombie down there. But it's just one of them. And then you go inside and you fix your turkey sandwich. And you go back, you go back to the wonder and you look and you're surrounded by zombies. I mean, they literally just like they just show up. Yes, indeed. All right. So that's how they get you in a, in a, you know, those kind. What changed the ball game on zombies was that movie 28 days later. And you had, and which those wasn't like traditional zombies. They were kind of like, Infected with some disease, but but for all intents and purposes, they were zombies. Right. They ran. Oh, nice. That changes the whole dynamic of a zombie movie. Yes, it does. Because I'm going to tell you something. Me and you, we're going to last about five minutes. Mm hmm All right? Because that's how I mean, I'm, I'm going I'm to be shooting at you, you know. <laughs> I'm going to be shooting at you if you're running after me, but, but I can't run. No, me neither. You know. He got me. Yeah. Well, with all of that, I've had a good time. Oh, me too. And it's that time to, I guess, uh, skedaddle. All right. Remember, folks, 
get you get your candy, get you get your pumpkins carved, and because you don't want the booger man showing Mm-mm. up in your house, Mm-mm. and you don't want them youngins rolling your house because you was a shit you didn't want to pass out candy, and you get a burning bag of dog shit on the <laughs> floor. I want to tell you something, and it's liable to be me that does it. You yes, know? indeed. So uh, everybody have a, a safe and fun Halloween. I hope you get the piss scared out of you watching a good scary movie. Yes, indeed. And we will be back next Friday with a brand new episode of the Russell and Mud Tooth Show or Mud Tooth and Russell Show, however you want to look How at you it. you want to do it. You can find out more at www.radiorandomnetwork.com. I'm hashtag RDM Russell Devin McLean. And I'm hash brown mud tooth. (laughs) We are out. For more information about the hosts, guests, or our other weekly programs, visit RadioRandomNetwork.com. Join us next week for another entertaining episode of Russell and Mud Tooth. Thanks for listening.